Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. In addition to our talk shows, we also produce tutorial videos, video classes, virtual stitch ins, and book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by our friends at Inmart and QT Fabrics. You can learn more about them in the links in the show notes. So uh, we have super fun fabric to accompany our Inmart thread. And I love the cotton thread because I, I find it's useful for stitching. I agree. Uh, in terms of piecing. I, right. liked, I like their poly line for quilting though. I agree. But these are all things I agree with. Yes, we, we are in agreement. Thank goodness. Awesome. Not always, but on this we are. <laughs> on this, yes. That, that, therein is the magic of the show. <laughs> agree on just enough stuff to keep you coming back. <laughs> You'd be like, ooh, ooh, what little nugget are they going to agree on? And then Today. completely diverge on everything else. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the fabric that we have from QT is balloon themed and it's called pop culture, which I found delightful. Um, and I love this one. <laughs> it's a little fun line with balloon animals. Delightful. Uh, and then there's other balloon prints as well in the line. All uh, the balloons. I believe this is available cute. in stores now. Well, as of when we're filming, this is uh, late summer 2019. So you could learn how to make the, you could go, oh, this is how you make this. I, if you study it. One could. One could. One oh, could that's not. cute. Well, when you go and you watch these balloon artists, oh, did I tell you, like, we went to the Georgia State Fair and they had a whole carousel made out of balloons. Like life size carousel mm -hmm. with the horse and the unicorn, and the uh, it was incredible. I think I have pictures. Did you somewhere. tell them that we have this awesome fabric? No, but this fabric would have been great with it. It was just really cool. Anyway, <laughs> who's this by again? <laughs> this is Monica Zhu for QT Fabrics. Okay, I just missed that. So today we're going to be talking about hiring long armors and not long arms, and designing quilt patterns. We're joined by the lap size quilt pattern that accompanies the pre-fused applique kit, Screen Time, and you can find the kit in our shop at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. Yes, I thought the balloon animals were a nice compliment. To, to kitty cats. Yes. Yeah, so on my TV show, this is uh, related to our Saturday morning pattern. And the one that Lynn did had cartoon novelties, fabrics on the TV. Right. On mine, I'm watching um, the Animal Planet channel or something. Because I have, I have all animals. <laughs> she is, I, I thought it was funny because it was like mostly cats, but things that cats watch. Owls. Owls. Birds. Giraffes. Fish. <laughs> There's giraffes down at the bottom. Butterflies. These are all things I think cats get fascinated with. The giraffe threw me off. I was like, I got all the others, but that one. So you have to know one of my cats to understand that. Okay. So I have a cat, Morelli. Um, bless his heart. He's brown tabby. It's not the brightest breed. <laughs> it's like the basic. It's the basic cat. Basic cat. And he, like, no matter what we're watching on TV, if he is in the living room with us, he's, like, planted on the the, the arm of the couch, and he's just, like, watching that the TV. That is amazing. Oh, yeah. And we have pictures of him where, he, before we got a sound bar that sat below our TV, uh, ours is kind of mounted on the wall, and it's over our mantle. And so he would go sit on the mantle, like, right in front of the TV, and just, I got a great picture of him like staring down C-3PO because we were watching Star Wars. So, so he is all in for any kind of TV. The only... <laughs> okay, so Josie, my dog. So Josie watches... When she was a puppy, we were watching That Darn Cat. And the very first part of the movie is the cat walking through, like, an alley and on top of stuff. And, like, when that part was on, she was, like, looking at it. And then when it went off, when the cat wasn't on the screen, nothing. Nothing. Cat comes back, looking at it. So that was Josie. So she that's her favorite movie, That Darn Cat. There's the Haley Mills version, yes. not the uh, newer version with Christina Ricci. 
okay. I heard over here from sure. production support. Anyway, there uh, there's a whole series of YouTube videos and for video catnip that the shelter that I sometimes volunteer for, Good Muse, will play for the shelter residents. <laughs> and then they've got a TV, and then they have with this fish on it, or with... oh yeah, fish, yeah. bugs. <laughs> mice running around and we have this it's stadium seating literally it's like a three-level bench <laughs> and there's like cat beds on it and the cats will just be like oh. watching in front of the tv <laughs> it's like awesome <laughs> yeah jesse didn't want anything else except for that darn cat well in other exciting so. news <laughs> in terms of what's up we uh have some new merch on our shop site we do uh, okay so we released this pattern Last year? Yes, last year. Like, yeah, last year. And so when our merch vendor offered leggings, I was like, I think that quilt would make cool leggings. So I actually took our quilt. Crazy Modern. Crazy Modern. And had it put on leggings. Um, And I really like them. <laughs> They're really cool. So this is the sample that we got. And look, it's even got our tag on it. I saw that. That's kind of cool. Um, but I was, they come in. Uh, Anywhere from extra small up to 6XL. Yes. So there's two different listings on our site, shop.thestitchtvshow.com. One is for extra small through extra large. And then 2XL through 6XL is in a separate listing for plus size. Yeah. And they, they'll look different because of how they, they, the printing, the printing on them. But this is just a print of our quilt, Crazy Modern. So it's kind of cool because you can see the different fabric and some of the stitches and I don't know. It was really fun. I thought it was neat. Mm -hmm. um, so check that out. Delightful. We've already had somebody order them. So. And uh, there's also a skater dress, like a tank dress with yes. a yeah. flared skirt, I guess. Right. And and I put the same quilt same on design. that too. Um, just because it's got a lot going on in it. And I think it was kind of fun. So, yeah, I ordered the dress for myself. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm used to lecture in. Like, because it's kind of cool. It's this is stretchy fabric and it's cool. And I think sometimes you want to look nice, but I don't know. I got the idea from Jane Sassman mm -hmm. because when she came and taught us, every shirt she wore was from her fabric. And I was like, that's cool. We don't have a fabric line yet. I'm not saying that couldn't be on its way because that's one of my dreams. It's not It's not made it onto the to-do app yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> she won't let me think about it yet. No. So maybe next year. We got to get, get with the fabric company. Anyway. Anyway. So hiring so a long armor. Hiring a long armor. Have you ever hired a long armor? Yes. How'd it go? But okay. When I <laughs> went okay, pretty good. Still like the quilt. <laughs> so okay. I uh, was looking specifically for an all over pattern on a king size quilt because I knew it was a quilt that I was not going to want to tackle on my home machine. I've got at the time I only had my Janome, which has a nine inch throat space. I didn't have my Sweet Sixteen yet, so I was like, "Ooh, let me." That's a lot. Of let work. me quilt by check. <laughs> That is a lot of work. Yeah. So uh, it's actually a friend of ours was a long armor, and yeah. I uh, booked her services. And so when doing that with the all over, you pay a certain rate per square inch. And for a king size quilt, like it's not cheap, but it was worth it to me to not have to a find a place big enough in my house to base that quilt, and then b actually try to wrestle it through my own machine. Oh, it is wrestling. Yeah, quilt wrestling. So I've hired long armors before I had mine, of course. I hired a couple of long armors. Um, it went great. Uh, I think the thing with hiring a long armor is look at what they've done. Mm -hmm. like Samples you know, of their work. Get recommendations from friends that have also right, done it. Right. Um, and what kind of quilting are they doing? Is it um, hand-guided? Is it? Are you wanting them to do a pantograph? Or is, do they have a computer? Um, 
computerized machine. Yeah, because those can do different things that mm-hmm. maybe you'll be picking out a panograph. And sometimes I think that's hard for people to imagine what that looks like on their mm-hmm. thing. Um, are you doing custom? Be willing to pay. Oh, yeah. Be willing to pay big bucks if you're doing custom. And and I think they're worth it. Very worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, they enhance the quilt in ways that, you know, if you're not... They make it a quilt. Long armors make it a quilt. It is just fabric and batting before you let it get quilted. That's what makes it a quilt. So how do you go about finding a long armor? Go to shows and see who's listed as the long armor. Ask your quilt shop, local quilt shop, who's a long armor. Um, ask other friends and guilds who's a long armor. I promise you they're around. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find some online. And honestly, there are people I know that ship quilts to other states because they like the way this person quilts and they hire, you know, big names. Mm-hmm to do it, and um, I also know that there are online shops that you can send your quilt to. Um, I You can send your quilt to, like, big company. I think Missouri Star has a long-arming service, hmm. um, and they'll do long-arm stuff for you. But, gosh, stay local. I mean, not to say that if you don't want to do that, that's fine, and if that's you don't have anybody local – Totally do that. But I just am all about supporting the people in your area. And Yeah. Yeah. What I appreciate is... You have a relationship with them. Well, finding someone that you can work with and you both grow your skills at the same time. Right. Which has kind of been our approach to sponsorship of, of like, who do we want to work with in the quilting industry? Right. Yeah. And, and I like that approach for long armors, too, because lots of times uh, long arm businesses start because a quilter is passionate they decide they want to get along our machine, but then they're like, holy moly, it's expensive. I should maybe take on some work to help pay for that. Right. And I think finding the right skill level at the right place, and then you you end up growing together. Whereas you continue to grow your skills in piecing and hiring out the quilting, you get an opportunity to really create something from scratch and build this relationship and a partnership, oh, yeah, which is yeah, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then ask them, once you establish that relationship with whoever you're working with, ask them what they need. Mm -hmm. Because most long armors will tell you, I want so many inches on all sides of the quilt. For the backing to be bigger than the top and the batting. Um, If you have artwork on the back of your quilt, ask if the long armor has ever done that before. Ask them if they understand how to place that. If you want it in a certain area... On your quilt. Um, I One of my first experiences with a long arm is I had framed the backing of my quilt. Well, when she loaded it, she didn't load it centered. Mm. She loaded it as close to the top of the backing that I gave her. So it cut off the bottom frame when she was done quilting it. And I was disappointed um, because I had purposely framed that so that when you turned it over, it would have that. So if that's important to you, to have those types of discussions yes. with your long armor. And it's that's a skill that the long armor needs to have. And if they don't have that, then, you know, maybe that's not what you want to do with that long armor. Um or if they're like, I can figure it out or, you know, be willing to risk that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I thought I'd talked to him and I apparently didn't. And it came back and I was like, oh, wow, not what I wanted. And there's a way to do it. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, you have to understand how to measure down and get it and stuff like that. Um What's their wait time? Exactly. How long is it going to take? Right. Where are you in the queue? You should know that Christmas and graduation are big times. Local shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they're backed up because there's a local show and they've got to have all these done for pictures or all these done to get in the show or whatever, local shows can back up a long armor. Graduations, Christmas, 
um, definitely back up long armors. So what what's your timing? What's their timing? And is that mm -hmm. is that working together? Um, see their work. Just look at what they do. Um, and establish a relationship with them, you know, kind of thing. I've done work for people that I know they were disappointed in um, when I was new. And I wish they would have said, I didn't like your choice. You know, now I've, when I ch I've been long arming for a while, but I've also done work for people that she was like, oh, my gosh, this is so great, you know. Yeah. So. I think being open and, and there's a, there are some long armors that take direction very well and they're right. absolutely good. If you tell them I want this kind of design and this particular this background fabric and then all of the others get this thing like cool they can do that um there are some that they want to contribute their artistic vision to your talk right and you need to understand that going into it and you need to say i've seen their artistic vision in others so these work out really well and sometimes it's like i trust you enhance my top right <laughs> and and there are some basic things like do you provide the batting do they provide the batting mm -hmm. Um, prepare your top. Cut all the extra threads off so that it's not... Make sure you don't have weird shadowy threads behind white fabric. Right. Because that's going to be... You mad. know, there are some long armors that will do that, and there's some that will just throw it on there and quilt it. Lint and... roll it. Don't hand it to them full of cat hair or that's, dog hair. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, prepare the top. Cut the threads that are straggly. Do a victory lap in eighth of an inch around the edge right. of your top, especially if you haven't backstitched to secure your seams, because when they're loading and stretching it, those seams on the edge might start to separate, and that is no bueno. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just a line of stitching, an eighth of an inch, all the way around the edge of your quilt, and it saves a lot. If it's important to you, ask if the long armor stitches in the ditch to stitch it down before they add other quilty. Um, some do and some don't. And there is definitely a different look about a quilt if it's not stitched in the ditch. And um, and if you are people stitching. feel very strongly one way or yes. the other. Um, so have that conversation with them. And but you need to look at what stitching in the ditch looks like um, and, and if you like it. Because and press your seams accordingly right. as you construct it. Because if you want them to stitch in the ditch and you've pressed all your seams open, they're not going to do it. It's not going to go great. No, it'll be bad. Right. So, like, those are the kind of conversations that I think our experienced quilters are going to understand and have. But if you're first doing it, those are kind of questions that I would be asking mm -hmm. um, or I would want someone to ask and I may ask as a long armor would ask somebody now I don't long arm for people very often so um because Pam doesn't let me <laughs> now it's not true it's just we stay you know why so I busy don't? because when you've we done it <laughs> I get a lot of angsty texts oh, oh I can't believe I've done this oh, oh I don't want to ruin it oh that's true I am not good at long arming for other people because I so stress about whether they're, and this is why I don't do it, is whether they're going to like it. And am I meeting their artistic vision? And uh, like, I so admire the people who do it for other customers. Oh, it makes me nervous. <laughs> I used to just say, I'm not very good, so don't hire me. I can't say that anymore. I, so, but yeah, makes me nervous. I just, like, I want people to really like it. It's like at my day job. I'm perfectly fine writing things for work if it's in my voice. Right. As it turns out, my voice is a snarky cat. That is not <laughs> the voice of most large corporations. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm cool quilting a quilt as I would quilt it. Right. I'm not cool quilting a quilt, impersonating a different quilter. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I feel like. <laughs> I do. I do. I feel like that. So... I think those are the, like hiring a long armor, it's quilting by check. It can be a great thing because mm -hmm. if you really love piecing and you don't like the quilt wrestling and it, it's totally worth it. Like we were talking the other night on uh, the stitch in, 
I don't want to do a t-shirt quilt. I could hire somebody else to do it. I'm probably not going to, but <laughs> I think as I, in my head, I just feel guilty that I should do it. <laughs> Guilt's a big motivator for Husband's me. I need to get look right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get over this whole guilt thing. So, anyway, I don't know anything else. Do you know other things about long armors? Understand the pricing. When you're doing an all over, oh, it will be priced per inch. If you're doing custom work, it will typically be done by hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and then understand, are there surcharges for thread? They, they will have a default batting. You are usually more than welcome to provide your own batting, but make sure it's the size that they request to accommodate their setup. And, and the Some of the them top. will put the binding on too for you. Stitch it on. Yes. Along the edge. Right. Yes. So I have mixed feelings about that. If it's really square and you did a good job, Ooh. then you can do that. Under, I have an understanding that if your piecing is not perfect, and classic examples are a Lone Star that may have a B cup in the middle <laughs> instead of a nice flat middle, <laughs> that your long armor is going to struggle a bit. To accommodate that. Likewise, if you wavy borders. got wavy borders where your borders are a little bit longer than your center, but you just pieced it on there anyway and kind of stretched it, like that may cause some issues. And it will then cause this and, not may. It will and cause And if you issues. admit like if you admit up front, like I have issues with my borders, <laughs> they are usually willing to accommodate and be like, oh, well, do you want to have it be Tucks. like tucked? Do you want like they have different coping mechanisms? <laughs> For accommodating that. So And be, some they are so good at it you can't see exactly. it. Exactly. So just have an understanding, acknowledge where you're at in your own quilting skills and accommodate as best you can in this relationship. Which that's when you want some of the stitch in the ditch to happen. Because if you've got fullness, they can honestly one of my very first quilts that I had a long armor do. Um I put on the border, and I didn't know how to put on the border the right way. She called me up, and she said, I'm going to take your border off and re-put it on for you. And this is how nice she was. I said, really? She literally gave me that much <laughs> extra that she had cut hmm. off because she, I didn't know how to put it on the border the right way. Another thing to understand ahead of time is, are they, when they give you the quilt back, have they already trimmed it? Yes, and some will and some won't. And if they do trim it, do you want those trimmings back? Because that could be like a good big chunk of fabric that yeah. you could use for binding for another quilt. When I've done it for other people, I always give that back. Yes, I, I always, always expect kinda... to get it back untrimmed. <clears throat> and now I don't, I don't always give the batting that I cut off back. But, oh, maybe I do. Well, like I'll fold if it's a big chunk. Yeah. But if it's like little sides, I don't. If it's less than two inches. Probably yeah, shouldn't expect it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't worry about that. So, yeah. Interesting. Good question. Somebody gave us that topic. Google did. Google. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to take a closer look at screen time, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, we're back, and what we're going to look at now, or talk about now, is designing quilt patterns. And writing them, which I think is infinitely more challenging than just designing quilts, because, like, woo! You do have to tell people how to do it. What? <laughs> so Here's as, a picture. So as desired. Doesn't work. No. Peace as desired. <laughs> nope. Not at all. Oh, and we joke because we've actually seen that in a book and our friend who's in this room with us <laughs> had that as instructions. It was just like, what? <laughs> Peace as desired. Study layout to determine how it goes together. It's like, what? That is not a good pattern, <laughs> y'all. That makes sense. It's not a good pattern. Okay. So uh, we've got a number of these under our belt now. We've done a few. 
I think we're just like 25. If you look really? at our shop in the digital quilt pattern category, it says 26 because one's the project sheet for Sawtooth Stars, which is oh, a little right? different. Yeah. So, y'all. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I, and I think we work well together because I think designing takes on a whole kind of. Um, it's easier to design a quilt in, like, I use EQ8. As we, do I. We both use EQ8. Uh, we should let EQ8 know we use their product. Um, and it's really easy to draw a block or draw, you know, put some fabric in the block and then, like, put it on a grid and, oh, my gosh, there's a quilt pattern. And I can design quilt patterns all day long. Um, not all of them are great. When she gets my EQ8 files, I'll have 15 quilts in the file that I, I have <laughs> gone through and gone. I may have started here, mm -hmm. but there's like, oh, wait, what if I add this or flip this or turn this or change the color here or do this? And so EQ makes it really easy to manipulate the idea until you have, like, there were probably... In the last episode, there were probably 20 different designs of that quilt before we got there. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great thing about designing patterns. The hard thing about designing patterns is that once you've done that, then you go, okay, now how do I make it? How do I explain this to someone else? How do I explain this to someone else? In an efficient way. And, and I find it so interesting because your perspective is very much about the design and the visual impact. And I'm like, wait, can you cut this out of a fat quarter or do and you I need never three eighths? It that and way. she hates it. But I'm like, <laughs> so I have designed quilts. And then they're like, Lynn, I can't get the color right. Send the EQ8 file to Lynn. I'm like, and the blocks are specific. Like you only get six of these blocks because if you do more than that, then you can't fit it in a fat quarter. And, and it drives her. She's like individually coloring. I'm like, knock it off. Stop it. You got to do swap color and like wholesale. So there's some. Or, or here's what happened. She sent me this pattern and had me color it without rules around it. And I send it back and she changes the color. And I'm like, <gasps> like, that's not where I put that black fabric. And I put the black fabric in a certain block here because I liked the overall design of what it. So it's the same, like, like we go cute. back and forth all the time with this. Because from Pam's perspective, which is valid, I mean, we're trying to make patterns. Commercial patterns that people will buy. Right. <laughs> and it's easier for us to make a pattern that says, buy five fat quarters or buy X <laughs> amount of yardage. Versus get 1,000 individual scraps. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> so, like, that can be very frustrating, but at the same time, we compliment each other because sometimes, you know, she gets stuck on color, and I'm like, well, what if we did this? Or, And I'm really... I'm like, I'm going to make it a boring white background, Lynn. Please save me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No white background. <laughs> I really struggle to put a white background on. Like, it's a good... It's great and love and a lot of people love that, but I have to admit, I just am like, that's the easy choice and I never want to make the easy choice. So I'm always putting different stuff behind it. Yeah. I think one of the things that you and I both <laughs> not struggle with, but is understanding that it's great that we have two different perspectives. How do we merge that? Well, and who are we writing for? It's understanding right. your audience. Yeah. And is our audience, like, typically the people that are the quilters that are technology-friendly and watch our show, because they're online, Right. you know, they're a little, they're a little more attuned to technology. They're also uh, working full-time or they're retired, and they may not necessarily be the ones that are dwelling and only making one quilt a year like they may do that but if they're they're doing it for family and for other friends like our our show isn't targeted to like only people that make quilts for shows we're like we're targeting the real quilters that just no. want to like sometimes make something quick make something fun and easy and so we do a lot of pre-cut friendly right and that you know only working with a 10 inch square of fabric to start with can be your <laughs> real challenge and you're just it like can well i could only get 
a hundred square inches out of this. How am I going to spin that in my quilt? Right. And I never look at it like that. But she does, which helps me, like, do stuff. So, like, she'll send this crazy file, and I'm like, cute, we're not going to use 50 oranges in this. We're going to narrow it down to, like, three five. or five. Five. <laughs> uh, and, and so I would say, if you're interested in designing patterns, get a sounding board. Absolutely. Lynn and I have each other, but you may be a solo designer. You don't right. have to go out and partner with someone. But get right. a group of friends that will give you some real talk about like, Ugh. like, oh, I love that. It would be better if it worked with a fat eighth or it was jelly roll friendly or, you know, it well, used balloon fabric. Like, understand and get a sounding board for that. Yes. And, like, understand your approach, too. Because a lot of times, you know, we both write patterns and they, we're both write patterns together and we write them individually. And what I think is interesting is Pam is really good at writing patterns that take all the fabric into consideration and stuff. I will say that one of my goals in writing patterns is to teach a new technique. And you'll find that a lot of the patterns that I write will be like, we haven't talked about this yet in our work, in our you know catalog of patterns. And I'm always pushing that envelope of, I, I want you to buy a pattern and go, I don't know how to do this. I want to learn how to do this. And this is a quilt that I can learn that technique. And I think you'll find a lot of our patterns, which, <laughs> which I think Pam's like, we haven't done this before. And it's really easy I think for quilt pattern writers to go, I've already written how to do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go copy and paste how to do that from a previous pattern and put it in here. And I'm the one going, yeah, but we haven't tried this. We haven't. Yeah. And I think I push that envelope between the two of us. But I do think it comes in handy. So like the applique instructions. Oh, right. Like we, they will we be got like similar, yeah. like pattern to pattern. It's the shapes are different, the design is different, but like the oh, layering or the yeah, when you do this before this, but like yeah, how to stitch it down. That's still the pretty same. much the same thing, yeah. And I think we've gotten to the point where we've got a decent library of instructions on how to make half square triangles, right? <laughs> like, cool, yeah, got that's it. how you do Done. Um, but when I think of new pattern writers that are starting out, some things to consider are whether you're going to rely on photography to illustrate your instructions or whether you're going to use a graphics uh, software to create illustrations around them. Agreed. And I th our first set of patterns, we used photography and now we're leaning more towards graphics. But I will say digital cameras are very helpful from the standpoint of take pictures through every step. That way you have a reference mm -hmm. for the graphic illustration. Yes. And you also have a reference for your editor and you get an editor. Seriously. It is helpful. It, it is, is very helpful. In our case, it's a third perspective. It is. <laughs> it's not just a second perspective. And get an editor who has made a quilt at least once in their life um, and understands that WF is with the fabric and RST is right sides together and... You know, all those little kind of things that we assume everybody knows, but you won't get peppered with questions. Well, I mean, the best practice on any acronym is to spell it out on first use and then right. just use it after yeah. that. Like, that's just... Yeah. Could get an editing. editor. Math, check your math, check your math, check your math. Definitely test. Test. And whether it's you get a friend to like, hey, would you test this pattern for me? And they go and make a version of it. And then, hey, great, you've got now another sample to show to be like, oh, look how it looks with different fabric, which is always helpful. Well, and just like what you were talking earlier, I think it was the last episode, but you were talking about I have four different ways to do sew and flip. Mm -hmm. So sometimes method one works in this pattern. Mm -hmm. Method two works in this pattern. So, you know, like, there are lots of different ways to make half-square triangles, but sometimes this method is uses the fabric more efficiently mm -hmm. for the pattern or, you know, I need the same fabric so I can use a triangulations kind of 
technique where it's paper piece and get 20 at the same time mm -hmm. instead of whatever. Um, make a sample, make test samples, make a test block. Um, it, when, so when it comes to formatting too, if your goal is just to sell in local markets, maybe your local craft show, um, craft show, local quilt shop, um, the quality of pattern that you want to put forward is different from if you're expecting to be picked up by a big distributor. Right. And I think there are expectations that the yeah. distributors have because they are they are trying to make money as well. And so they want the best looking piece that they can get to sell to quilt shops and their customers. And so you may want to pay someone to do professional layout. That's something that we do. Um, and right. I think the level of graphics speaks to a level of professionalism. So there's an expectation that we are a company. This is a business for us. Um, I yeah. think the platforms that used to support the burgeoning quilt pattern Indie designers, designer. it's it's a little dicey yes. right now. It is. Craftsy used to be that market. Etsy still exists for that, but they've had some changes in policies that may make it not cost effective. Um, you can set up your own shop, but again, if you're just getting started, it's a, it's a big software and learning investment to figure out the tech to host your own quilt patterns right. and sell PDFs online. If you're trying to get in with a distributor, you're going to have to have ISBN numbers and you will have to invest in those. So that's something that I think as we were starting this, we went, oh, oh wait. We, we have to pay $90 to get barcodes or whatever yes. amount we pay. Yeah. And yes, you do. You, you have do. to have the barcodes or you won't get picked up by a big distributor. Um, so that's kind of important. I want to go back a second, though, and talk about what's the spark? What's the, like, when we're designing a pattern, like, what, where do we start? Like, where do you start when you're designing a pattern? Like, I know, I know my answer, but where would you start? <laughs> so I am coming at it from either a structure or a marketing standpoint. And yes. by structure, I mean I'm looking at our catalog of patterns, and I'm like, we have a gap in patterns that use five-yard bundles, which we do. We have a pattern that uses a five-yard bundle. I'm like, well, that's not a category with one pattern, kind of like when you're writing and you've got bullet points. You need at least three bullet points. It's going to look stupid. <laughs> So we can't call it out as a five yard like pattern until we get more and there's like a category. I never do that. <laughs> Which is a structure and a marketing piece. Uh, in marketing pieces, I know like, okay, the uh, let me check the Google search trends on like, yeah. what's the top quilt unit that people are searching for? How to make flying geese. Like, oh, we should do more flying geese patterns. So if you are in this to build a business, you need to pay attention to the marketing. And that is about understanding, do people e even want to make a pattern like that? Right. Or is, you know, is the one block wonder fad over now? And so don't try to do anything else around that. Or are we now looking at, you know, how the modern quilting movement has grown up and they've moved on from simple piecing and they moved into curves. So like maybe don't rely on just like, I'm going to make a giant four patch and call it a quilt pattern. Like that's... No, you have to understand what the market is for the pattern that you're designing and how you're going to reach that audience. If you're designing very traditional quilt patterns that rely on Civil War reproductions, there's a market for that. But you have to understand right. how to reach that in designing your patterns and where you're selling them. And so my perspective is very much the business of pattern writing, right? which is very different from Lynn's. Right. I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it, too. Yeah. <laughs> I start with, like, the spark is, and, and I think... She gets frustrated with me sometimes, or maybe not frustrated, but she's just like, like, I need an idea. Mm -hmm. I need a, one of the, la this pattern right here. Pam said, you know, we haven't made a pattern that matches our logo. And I went, but the idea was there. And then it was really easy for me to go in and go, oh, we could do this. And it was like that. I needed that spark, but I needed her to kind of trigger it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's fabric. Like yesterday, we were some. We have been blessed that there are fabric designers now that have come to us and said, "Hey, I've got a new line coming out. Will you use my fabric in a pattern?" And sometimes I look at the fabric and go, "I got nothing. Like this doesn't speak to me." 
And the last two designers that came to us, so I'm like, no, I know exactly what to do. And then I start designing stuff in EQ, and then I'll send it to her and go, okay, here's my beginning. Mm -hmm. And then she looks at it and go, okay, but you have to take the fabric down to Or like, this. that's a weird size. It's or that's too big for a wool hanging. Right. It's too small for a lap quilt. Like, make it bigger. Like, yeah. So the, our conversation was... I've been playing with this block, mm -hmm. and I really like this block. It's an easy block. And I, someone had contacted us. They sent us the files of their new fabric line. And so I downloaded those into EQ8, and I texted her and said, she had already said yes to the designer. Oh, I said, I'm interested. Could you tell us more? Which is like a qualified yes. Uh -huh. I'm like... Maybe. Because, yeah. like, if we're going to have to panic sew this in two days while right. crying before a market deadline, like, maybe I'm not interested. <laughs> right. Yeah. So <laughs> I had looked at the fabrics and went, oh, I think this will look really good with this block. I think this block's easy. You know, and I kind of, you know, because I've worked with Pam for years now, that it was easy for me to go, I know she would like this kind of block, mm -hmm. and here's my selling point star. It's easy. <laughs> I and I was like, I've dude. already been thinking about that block for years. So, yes. <laughs> and she was like, yes. And I'd already made samples of it that I could send. She did send not reveal it. this yesterday. <laughs> I sent you the picture of the sample. Well, yes, the EQ8. You implied that you had, like, gone out and it's gotten right fabric there. and made samples. No, it's right there. Really? Yes, I'll show it to you. Mm. After this, we mm. will show it to her. Mm. I'd already made samples of this block, not in the size you want, but in a different size, and said, I really think this is turning out mm -hmm. cute. And so I think that my approach is more that I need the spark, I need the idea. Pam will feed me some of that, and then... Well, and help then I go back to, to a thing that is marketable and sellable. Right. So, But then I go back to her and say, okay, let's tweak this, or, you know, like our block of the month program... <laughs> sincerely, my first attempt at it, I love the way it looks, but it'll have 20 fabrics Too in much. it. Too much. And she's like, no, we got to get... By the way, I got it down to nine. Oh, cool. Good. See? Now we're all happy. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's good. <laughs> I've already done that. She's very happy. So I think that... I mean, those are some of the steps that we both go through... You know, you want to you want somebody to be able to do it, but for me, I think that's more <laughs> reproduction of it's more important to you. Than, but for me, I'm like it's got to be attractive. Yeah. You've got to have like I know when we were designing our the look of our patterns, I said the full quilt needs to be on oh, yeah. the pattern. Don't if you are taking pictures, um, lifestyle shots, lifestyle shots of your quilt and putting it on the front of your pattern. I don't think you'll sell as many as if it has the full quilt. Only because I love the lifestyle shots. They're gorgeous. They're for marketing. Right. They're not They're for, for... getting people interested in looking closer at the pattern in right. which they need to see the quilt that they are making. <laughs> yeah. Because you may have one If it's draped over a chair, you don't element. know that you focused on, but the rest of the quilt is one inch half square triangles. And people get the pattern, and then they're angry. <laughs> and you don't want angry letters. No. You do not. Angry letters. And check your math, check your math, check your math. Don't put patterns out that, you know, and try not to put patterns out that, you know, have buy five yards and you only use two. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not fair to the no to the consumer. You should only have to buy five yards if it's, like, a whole cloth or a backing. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Well, I mean, but when you right. add up the whole thing. Right. Yeah. So just check your math. Get, and, a, and get a great friend. <laughs> under, <laughs> understand with them. why you want to design quilt patterns. If right. you're legit trying to buy build a business, everyone has to start somewhere. But be mindful of, oh... You can't do a quilt pattern design business with one pattern a year. Mm -mm. You gotta, you gotta do more than that. And can you sustain that? And are you, if you're doing it as a hobby, like totally cool. Like do it, design for your friends. You know, offer to set up a block of the month program for your guild. Like dip your toes in that, right? And start to build a reputation that 
you can carry forward and turn into an actual business. Right. Um, but if you're just designing patterns, you're like, I just love making stuff for my friends so they can use it. Like, cool, do that. You don't have to be picked up by a distributor for that. There are a lot of people that... Just publish online. That publish online. They design quilt patterns as through a blog. And maybe their blog is supported by, you know, Google ads or other advertising. And that's fine, too. That's also a business model. Um, I think that you can't rely on advertising in that way and we are big proponents of like value your work and don't work for exposure oh mm. but a great way to get to dip your toe in it is to reach out to fabric manufacturers and you write patterns for them for upcoming lines that right. they will produce as free sheets and there's mixed feelings on whether that's appropriate there are some fabric lines that don't do that there's some fabric lines that pay you which we think they right. should right i would um, there's I, some I would that not don't. offer to do it for free i yeah. don't do it they should be paying you they should a be couple hundred me. bucks yeah u.s i'm not sure about international rates yeah but the rate you know for u.s because then they're turning around and giving that pattern away yes and right. i think you get designer credit and, and you can start citing that in your portfolio of works and don't expect if you're just starting this don't expect to work with your favorite designers no don't expect to work with the Tula Pinks and the K Facets and the, you know, Anna Marie Horners and the, just, you're, if you're just starting, you love those fabrics. I love those fabrics. We love those fabrics. But those designers have a level right now. And, you know, if you're just starting, I would be surprised if those top designers will send you free fabric for you to design a quilt for them. Mm -hmm. um, and nine times out of ten, you don't get the fabric. You get pictures of the fabric to load into a software program. Mm -hmm. So either AI or an, an Adobe Illustrator's AI or um, EQ8, uh, and you're going to need to be comfortable in loading those in. Yeah. Because it's not... There's a lot of stuff you do before you ever see the fabric, like in real life. Yeah. And I would understand, too, like you don't need to have EQA to design patterns. I, I have designed some solely on graph paper right. and, you know, used other programs to either, you know, edit photography to make it look good or create illustrations that accompany the patterns. You don't need EQ8. There's um, other software available online to help you with that. Um and I, it's at the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember the name of it. But there's a number of, you know, software options that you could use to help you design. You don't need EQ8. Um, but, but it's a great program. Yeah. It's an expensive program, but it is a great program to use if you are designing. And if you're getting into this, it's very common across the designers. A lot of people yeah. use it. And if you are truly interested in this as a business, there are more and more education programs about breaking into this market tied into quilt market is a series called yep. threads of success right and it's got four different tracks and quilt pattern design is one of those tracks and they'll lead you through i'm sure not only the design process but marketing you know and in all of these accessory the stuff you need to know to turn this into a business um, and if you're a hobbyist again that's fine too there's nothing wrong with that yeah. but just know when you if you're just a hobbyist here's what here's what i want you to know when you buy that pattern at your local quilt shop, there's at least six months' work that went into that pattern um, from the creative side to the editing to the creation of samples to the photography, photography, the layout. The, layout. the oh, crap, I need to buy plastic <laughs> bags. <laughs> Oh, no. Where do I find a barcode? A lot of panic Googling at 10 o'clock at night. No. <laughs> Just know that that $10 that you're spending to buy anyone's pattern, it's – there is a lot of – there's a lot of work that goes into that before it gets to you. And it is very so, rare to make a living just designing quilt patterns. Yeah. For – a pattern bought at a local quilt shop, the designer is probably only making a dollar or a dollar twenty-five. Yeah, because That's there's retail true. markup, wholesale markup. Right. You know, and you have to subtract the actual cost of the paper and the bag and right. photography and all of that. Right. So, you pattern designers make about a buck. 
Just so you know. Just so you know. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I still love doing it. Like, I'm, we're still, we're not quitting. <laughs> we like doing yeah. this. And that's why we sell online, too, because our online sales price, like, is, that just comes back to us. Yeah, As yeah, opposed yes. to selling hard copy in a shop. Right. right. And there's there's benefits to both. Mm-hmm. Like, I think there's benefits to both. So that's our <laughs> that's our insider look at <laughs> writing patterns. There's a lot more to it than I think people realize. Yeah. So it's fun. It's challenging. But you can get your feet wet. Fabric yeah. companies submit to magazines. I mean, there's submit to magazines. Now, yeah. Yeah, there are. Oh well. There it is. All right. So uh, let us know if you have ever designed quilt patterns. Uh, you have something fun. You can leave a comment on the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by Inmart and QT Fabrics. You can find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping to produce this stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notifications on YouTube. Our next virtual stitch-in is Friday, September 13th. It is not at all ominous. We'll be at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode is September 27th. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, quilt patterns, and video classes. (laughs) Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.